You are listening to the Biblical Counseling Podcast, where we believe the Bible is sufficient and answers life's problems. I'm your host, Pastor Jeff Christensen. This podcast is for everyone in the body of Christ, staff pastor, church leader, caring homemaker, the responsible businessman, everybody. All of us are called to offer counsel regularly, and we every day need a word of counsel from the Lord. So these episodes are designed to assist you in learning to give godly counsel, also to develop discernment in evaluating counsel that you receive. So it's my prayer that these podcasts, that these episodes will enlarge your vision of the Lord Jesus Christ as a wonderful counselor. God bless you. Grab your Bibles. Let's get started. See you on the inside. Hey there, welcome back to the Biblical Counseling Podcast. Glad you're with us. Glad you're following this series, this theology on the Holy Spirit. We are in our final few podcast episodes on the topic of the Holy Spirit. We started at episode 174, and many of the students have gone through and bit by bit, week by week, picked up a theology of biblical counseling. And last time we looked at the the diversity of gifts and ministries, and this week we're going to look at all of us in the body of Christ have a role to play with a giftedness, a gift mix, as distributed as He wills by the Holy Spirit. So we're going to look at that right now. So turn in your Bibles, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12. We're going to take a look at that right now. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 12, all of us as members of the body of Christ have a role to play. That's our topic today about the Holy Spirit. For as the body is one and has many members, all of the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and all have been made to drink into one Spirit. A little bit different here. Uh, It is by the Spirit that we are baptized into the body. So this is not the baptism of the Holy Spirit, because in that uh, topic of the baptism of the Holy Spirit— Jesus is the baptizer, and the Spirit is the element, as it were, inundated, dunked, saturated in the Holy Spirit. Here it's the Spirit is the baptizer, and the element is into the body. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews, Greeks, slaves, free, we all been made to drink into one Spirit. So the reality of many but one, or one but many, the body is one, many members, and it goes the other way as well. The members of that one body being many are one. So all the members, the interplay between one and many, and it is an overriding issue, especially in this next section of Scripture, verses 14 to 19. We're going to read it in a minute. One but many, but many but one. It's kind of, when you talk about the body of Christ, it's one, but yet it's many. And so the truth of the scripture where we pick up, it's going another direction about the spiritual gifts. And both are true, many members, one body. Let's look at verse 14. 1 Corinthians 12, 14. So in our section here, We're talking about all of the members of the body of Christ have a role to play, a giftedness, a gift mix, as we're talking about the Holy Spirit. Uh, Chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians, pretty much uh, chapter 12, verse 12 through verse 21 is what we're going to look at in this episode. For in fact, verse 14, the body is not one member, but many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, 
I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? Verse 18, but now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he pleased. And if they were all one member, where would be where would the body be? So the fact the body is not one member but many, and the multi many faceted aspects of the body here in this passage are emphasized. The emphasis on the fact that the body is many, like the human body. You look at the human body, it is one. You look a little bit deeper, a little bit closer, many members. And that's exactly what the scripture is doing here, because I am not of an eye. I'm not an eye, therefore, am I not of the body? Kind of a rhetorical question, of course not. And so many members is the the point is we all have ministry, each of us are needed you so the passage is saying you as a biblical counselor are going to uniquely with your gift mix as distributed as he wills by the holy spirit god is going to give you a gifting to minister to those in your sphere those that he crosses your path we like to say divine appointment But God will do that, and we can trust him to do that, to bring to your radar or your discipleship circle those that he wants you to counsel, minister to, serve, love, help, uphold, uh, just really disciple is what it is. And that's what you're called to do. And here it's beautiful because you're going to be much different than I am. I'm going to be... Uh, different than you and and so there are many members but it's a great beauty we're all needed we can't say hey i'm not an eye what use am i in the body we can't say that you know and we're tempted to let me just bring something up about the current trend in on the internet with social media whether twitter instagram facebook linkedin TikTok, whatever your flavor is. Um, YouTube is a big one. And as you look around and you see some polished minister uh, ministers of the gospel, they're doing great. More power to them. I pray for those influencers, celebrities, uh, those that God are using in a great way. They have a big impact. Praise the Lord for that. But don't let that stop you to say, well, I'm not like one of them. I'm not really making that big of an impact. My impact is so small. I I ought to just let these celebrity influencer uh, mega ministers do the work because they're doing so great. And I get that. And I understand that. But God wants to use you in that arena because you will be held accountable for the gifting that God has given you in the sphere of influence he has given you. And so praise the Lord for that. We just, you know, try to push that aside. And I know that is a struggle for some, not all. Some of some people don't stay away from social media and that's good. If that's your, uh, your flavor of the day, stay away from it. I get it. But you can't say, Hey, I'm not an I. What use am I to the body? You can't say that because there are many aspects to the body, to the body of Christ, and we can't say, hey, I'm just me, and I just have this gift, and hey, I'm not like him, I'm not like her, therefore I'm not part of the body. I don't have a place. I don't have a productivity. We cannot say that and hold to a biblical worldview. And although some might point it out, look how great I am and the ministry that I have, and we kind of shrink back and say, yeah, you're right. You've, you've got quite the ministry, and what am I needed for? You know, and you, could, you can sense that. You feel like, well, um, maybe I don't have what it takes to be that, uh, you know, that type of a biblical counselor or that type of a minister or that type of a servant in the body of Christ. I want to serve. 
we do want to serve. The Holy Spirit has been shed abroad his love in our hearts for people. It's the love of Christ that constrains us to serve the Lord Jesus Christ, to occupy until he comes where we just have a passion and a gifting, but it doesn't have to look like the person across the way. Just leave that to that person and the Lord and you do what you're called to do. You do you, I guess, is the common vernacular of, t- of the day. And so we can't say that. The point is we all have a role. And that's the point of this podcast and these passages of Scripture. We all have ministry. We are all needed in the body of Christ. Every person has a role. Every person has a place, just like in a physical body. The foot can't say, well, I'm not an eyeball. I guess I can't be part of the body. I mean, we don't need another eyeball, thank you. I need another foot. I I have two eyeballs. I need two feet. And we're all needed. That's the point. You are needed. I am needed in the body of Christ. And your unique personality and gift mix is no mistake. God has purposely, for his reasons alone, that maybe in his sovereignty we might not know, uh, we can clarify a bit of it in the scripture, but God wants to use you, especially in these last days. If not you, then who? You know, I know people in the fellowship that I am at, and some of these are in areas of the culture, of the community, in the neighborhood, of the marketplace, where I'll never reach, and many Christians might not reach. And whether they're a contractor, subcontractor, and they have, um, you know, they have workers, employees, laborers, and so forth, they can reach them. Maybe they're in Spanish, and you know, maybe <laughs> I don't know Spanish. There's, you know, I know poquito español a little bit, but it's very it sounds like English. And you know, another brother might be a rancher. And he's going to deal with the vendors that have to do with selling uh, cattle and, and, and things like that. And, and that's just way outside of my sphere of influence. So you see what I mean that God's going to gift you for, your, for where he wants to and who he wants to reach. And if you reach one person, you never know who that might be for God's purposes, his glory. And so we want to look at this and be reminded, that's all this is a reminder, is the person you're ministering to across the desk or at a, you know, at the coffee shop across the table or having a meal or sitting in the pew at church or wherever it might be at the, in the living room of your home, wherever you're ministering to somebody, when you look at them, know that they are a member of the body of Christ. And you, you might think, well, you know, they're not very effective. They're on the shelf because they're They've sinned, and and they and they or they're they're grieved to the point of ineffectiveness. But nevertheless, God has given them a role. They have a place, and that's your uh, well. That's your next step is to get them strengthened. We'll allow the Holy Spirit to use you as an instrument, is in in the hands of the Lord to to bring them back into the word, back into prayer, back into strength so that they can get involved in the body of Christ where they belong. And I've seen that in in my counseling ministry where I've helped somebody find out where their place is in the body of Christ and they begin to flourish. Yes, they had some uh, difficulties, some trials to overcome, some sin to repent of, for there to be fruit of that repentance and restoration to happen. But while that's going on, they can begin serving in a capacity, and you can help them. I think it's beautiful. And so we can't say any part of the body is more or less important than another. That's very critical to understand that each member has a place. You have a place. But those that you're ministering to, do you see how this brings hope? And many people come and they're just hopeless, like, I've ruined my life. Or, 
I need guidance and I don't know what next step to take and I'm anxious about it. Or I've sinned and I've disqualified. Well, maybe they have for a certain office that the scripture would say you're disqualified, but that doesn't mean they're extracted and, and tossed aside out of the body of Christ. They still have gifting and God can use them in a new capacity. They can be restored to usefulness. A lot of times people just need comfort or guidance. It isn't necessarily a sin issue on every front. I know that seems to be uh, the common trend is like, okay, what's your sin? What, what have you sinned against? And not necessarily. Some people just need guidance and help and comfort and hope. And God wants to use you as an instrument. So we cannot look at ourselves or those we counsel and say, you know, I'm just this. I'm not useful in the body of Christ. And we're tempted to, especially those of you or us or anybody that we know that are um, prone to the blues or being down and out or kind of a depression type of a situation. You can feel that way. You can feel like, gosh, I've been rejected over and over again in this area of ministry. You know, and it begins with people and then you know then there's other leaders that and you think okay well lord i pretty much have exhausted my capacity to minister and it has not been received in this um you know ministry that i'm in look god has a plan and a purpose for you don't give don't throw in the towel because that's the enemy he's lying to you but also he's lying to the people that you're ministering to And so, the many aspects of the body, there are, it's multifaceted. It's, um, it's a beautiful, uh, you know, uh, I don't even know the words anymore, but it is a beautiful, many members, one body. Now let's switch gears and talk about the oneness of the body. 1 Corinthians 12, 20 and 21. We're kind of going through 1 Corinthians, looking at the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We're looking at the the Spirit of God. And listen to this. But now indeed there are many members, yet one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. And so this is the oneness, the unity, the body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again, you know, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. And, you know, the first section we studied, it was uh, emphasis, the point was on the many, and we can't say there's no place or role for us, we're all needed, but now when it comes, we're talking about the oneness of the body, we're all interrelated into one unit, that's the point here. You know, I can't say to you, I don't need you, we need each other in the body of Christ. And we totally, I think, underestimate how much we need each other in the body of Christ. There are leaders in the biblical counseling and in the church world as pastors and ministry leaders and women's ministry that will literally buy into this whole cancel culture. It's a psychology uh, known as boundaries. Or there's other, you know, uh, you know, you end relationships. But that's not what the Bible teaches. We're to receive one another, just as Christ has received us. There is no shutting people out of your life in this cancel culture that has crept into the church, and people do it all the time. In the body of Christ, leaders, they cancel people, and they cut people off. That There's no reason to. It's carnality, and it's just immaturity. And it's not the spirit, it's the flesh. And it's really sad to watch it, to witness it, to see it. And just may that not be said about you or I, that we cancel somebody because of some sort of um, idiosyncrasy we don't like, or some issue, you know, hey, look, people make mistakes and they do sin. But is that a reason to cast them off and to cut them off? Well, what if that's how... You know, we're to receive one another just as Christ has received you. What if we cut people off and and then 
you know, Christ would cut us. It just doesn't match Christ's likeness. And so when it comes to the oneness of the body, we're interrelated. We underestimate how much we need each other in the body of Christ. Just like a physical body needs the rest of the body for full life. In a physical body, every, uh, every part of the body needs the rest of the body for a fullness of the physical existence and healthiness. And that's how it is with the body of Christ. I need you. I need you, my listener, as do you need me, and we need each other. The reciprocity that ministering one to the other and the other to the one. I need your ministry to me when you make comments or uh, even corrections in the podcast notes or through sending me sending me a note, an email, a text. I got one today. Hey, there's a typo. <laughs> and I thought, I appreciate that. I want to hear. And so we can't say you aren't important in my life because we're of the body of Christ. We're many yet one, one yet many. In our next episode, we're going to go into 1 Corinthians 13. And it's a beautiful passage. And we're going to look at... Uh, you know, that fruit is more excellent than the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Fruitfulness is more, it, it takes higher priority in the, you know, so what, what's more important, fruit or gifts? That's what this section next week will talk about. Love you guys. See you next time. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to the Biblical Counseling Podcast. You can learn more at jeffchristensen.org. That's jeffchristensen.org. And be sure to share this podcast with a friend. Well, may the Lord richly bless you. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.